Right now at 5, Miami, Oklahoma welcomes a new manufacturing plant with a ribbon cutting. And we've got ourselves a pretty decent start out there. It is going to start to pick up with winds and cloudy skies. We'll take a look at that forecast, get you out the door coming up. Plus, a couple who said I do back in 1954 reveal the secret of their long love affair. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning, four states, and welcome to the KOAM Morning News. The time now is 5 a.m. I'm Caitlin O'Shaughnessy. I'm Chris Warner. It is, um, it is Wednesday. It is Wednesday. I Boy, had to think uh, about that. I, we, well, we had a we had a meeting yesterday. Yeah, and all the right. big bosses were here. Since we were here so much longer than we're used to, it do, it kind of throws it off does, your day. It, it messes the rest with of my your day. day. It really does. It really just turns everything upside down. But it is Wednesday. All Happy right. Wednesday. How's Happy the week Wednesday. going? It's going good. We're almost halfway there. We are. And then we got the Super Bowl. So. Oh, it's kind of hard to up. believe. You know, I it feels wait. like the Super Bowl was so far away just a few days ago, and now all of a sudden it's right it's around It's really the popped up, yes. It really has. And what else is going to pick up? The winds. Let's take a quick look outside. This is uh, our camera on top of the uh, Cornell Complex in downtown Joplin. And uh, as you can see, we're looking pretty good. We do have cloudy skies out there. MoDOT camera 20th and range line in Joplin. Uh, also looking pretty uh, good out there this morning. Temperatures around the region, again, Bear in mind, we're supposed to be in the 20s this time of year. Take a look at some of these Neodache, for example, at 49 degrees. We are about 20 some odd degrees warmer than where we're supposed to be for this time of year. Kids get on the bus. We're looking at mostly cloudy skies, south breeze around 5 to 10. Most of us in the low 40s and when that bus brings them back, we're going to go cloudy and those winds are going to start picking up gusting 25, maybe 30 miles an hour out of the south and we'll be up to the low 60s. Mid 60s, low to mid 60s will be our highs for today. We will be cloudy. We could see a few peaks of sun here and there, but otherwise it is a cloudy day and again those winds out of the south gusting um, upwards 25 to 30 miles an hour. They're going to continue to intensify in terms of those winds. We'll talk about that and those slight rain chances in that full forecast here in a few more minutes. Caitlin. Thanks, Chris. Well, new details released concerning Monday's Joplin school bus fire with children on board. The driver and all the children made it off safely, while the cause of the fire is still under investigation. We did learn more about its inspection history. Now this is a video from the scene Monday on South Range Line just off I-44. Investigators say the fire started in the engine compartment around 3 p.m. We spoke with the Joplin School's Assistant Superintendent of Operations, Matt Harding. He says that the bus driver recognized the seriousness of the situation, radioed it in, and got the children quickly off the bus. Harding says this bus model is one of the older ones the district owns. This is an older bus that this happened to, and so right now they're in the process of kind of looking to see uh, what happened uh, with this one. But they immediately went and checked all the other buses that have a similar engine style to see if, uh, you know, either they can find out what the issue is and, and contact the manufacturer and find out if they have any ideas what the issue may have been. Harding says every bus is inspected twice a year. This one was last checked in December. He also says Joplin has a 20-year record of scoring 90% or higher on the Missouri Highway Patrol testing. Those inspections include the entire fleet every spring. And a new manufacturing facility and jobs are coming to Miami, Oklahoma. The announcement came at a ribbon-cutting ceremony yesterday afternoon. Valencia Pipe Company is the latest addition to Miami, Oklahoma. The California-based company will now be able to access a whole new part of the country. This facility will create large septic and water tanks. CEO Andrew Durbin says Miami is the perfect place to set up shop and looks forward to helping the community grow. We like to support the local uh, Little League baseball teams. We like to support the uh, uh, different boys and girls clubs. That's what we have traditionally done in any community that we've come into. Uh, it, whether, in five years, uh, hopefully we're a well-established business within the community and we're continuing to grow. The facility will be able to employ up to 25 people within its first year, but Durbin says the hope is to expand and grow. And if you're ever on the go and want to still be able to watch our newscast live, just download the KOAM Plus app. It's available free of charge on app stores of your choice. Just search for KOAM Plus. And how long could you put up with somebody? 
In the spirit of Valentine's Day, a Fort Scott, Kansas couple shares how they managed 70 years of marriage. KOAM's Amber Jenkins has the love story. Oh, that's kind of a loaded question. Isn't it? <laughs> Donald and Beverly Malone were married in 1954. The high school sweetheart's love evolved into three sons, multiple grandkids, and a cozy home in Fort Scott, Kansas. The Malones attribute their 70 years together to just being there for each other. Usually like the most the same things all the time. <laughs> But uh, anybody that tells you that their marriage is just fun and games all the time, that's not right. <laughs> you have to work at it. She's been the back of the bone, you might say, because she has uh, helped me through things. And uh, well, I think it's I've a been, mutual, it's a yeah, mutual thing. It is. But. A friend to build a life with or just rake some leaves. The Malones say working on your marriage is vital for longevity, but staying active together is just as important. We've got into guard, flower gardening a lot. We do a lot of flower gardening and yard work. And we don't keep up too much on the technology. We have to wait till the grandkids come in to do something for us. So. Reaching 70 years together is a milestone for Beverly. I was hoping that we would get to 70 because my grandparents, uh, one set of grandparents had 60 years and the other grand parents had 70 years, so I was sure hoping that we would get to 70. And here's to many more. Reporting in Fort Scott, Amber Jenkins, KOAM News. Although their anniversary is in January, Donald and Beverly Malone plan on celebrating their 70th wedding anniversary in April when the weather is nicer. And that's a look at this morning's top stories in weather in our first seven minutes. Coming up on the KOAM Morning News. We're coming down the stretch of the high school basketball season in Kansas. We'll have the details from last night's games. Plus, China faces a heavy snowfall in the midst of the Chinese New Year travel rush. And we have a mostly cloudy and breezy day. We'll have what to expect with Chris Warner from the Skywatch Weather Center. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. We'll be right back. We know you depend on putting life on hold. Imagine your future differently with Capella University. We're coming down the stretch of the high school basketball season in Kansas. Last night, Colgan hosting Riverton and a couple of important CNC games. Panthers boys are trying to stay the number three team in Class 2A, and the girls are hoping to remain undefeated. Riverton girls basketball on the road, trying to hand Colgan it's first loss of the season, and that's a tall task. Early in the first, off the inbounds, Molly Sweezy. Looks like she's passing this one to no one, but Lily Brown swoops in and converts the layup. Riverton hanging tough, though. Chloe Parker left open from three. She drains it, rams down three, still in the first half. Polona Kalon finds Mariah Harris underneath the basket for the easy two points. Final seconds of the first half, three-pointer won't go, but guess who? Lily Brown gets the rebound and scores at the buzzer. Colgan takes a 17-point lead into the locker rooms. Lady Panthers coast from there on. Third quarter, Ja'Kayla Davis gets the steal. She goes coast to coast for the layup. A little later on, Davis again. Spin move, clears a path to the basket. Colgan remains undefeated. Lady Panthers win 52-26. Now to the boys game, Colgan beat Riverton on the road in December. Rams trying to get revenge. They won eight in a row. Panther big man Tristan Voss took control in the first quarter. Off the miss three-pointer, ball tapped right to him for the easy two. Couple possessions later, Tucker Harrell dumps it in, inside to him. Voss uses the post moves to score again. How about a third time? Doesn't matter who Riverton puts on him, Voss scores again. Panthers up by three, Riverton came to play though. Second quarter down by three. Kale Forbes connects on a triple that ties up the game. Rams trail by two at halftime. And in the third quarter, Lock North gets the bucket and the foul. Riverton would take a three-point lead. Colgan gets knocked down but gets right back up. Freshman Brady Batega confidently shoots the three and drills it. The Panthers beat the Rams again. Final score, 53-44. Well, Missouri Southern women's basketball Finally, is ranked inside the top 25 in the coaches poll released yesterday afternoon. The Lions are the number 24 team in the country. This comes as Southern is in the midst of a 14-game winning streak. Lions' last loss came on December 2nd. 
Missouri Southern is the only team from the MIAA to be ranked in the top 25 this week. Fort Hayes State was number 15 the week before, but fell out of the top 25 this week. And here are the current conference standings. Don't worry, you'll see them. No games across the league last night. The Lions have a one-game lead on the rest of the MIAA. Told you you'd see them, didn't I? Missouri Western is the closest one behind them. Coincidentally, that's the last team to beat Missouri Southern. Well, Pittsburgh State announces last week that its men's golf program will return for the 24-25 academic year. Yesterday afternoon, PSU Athletic Director Jim Johnson says they found their head coach, Nick Long. Long played golf for the Gorillas from 2000 to 2003, serving as a team captain for the final two years. In a press release, the new head coach of the Gorillas wants his program to live up to the standards of success that Pittsburgh State is accustomed to, saying, quote, we will compete at the highest levels while being good students and role models for younger generations and will be involved in our community. Still to come, why medical professionals are sounding the alarm about prescription drug shortages. I'll tell you what you need to know. We're going to take another look at that breezy forecast when the KOAM Morning News returns. Hey, Four States, Chris here with Windows and More, where we're still the area's number one option. Watching KOAM News Now, home of Super Bowl 58. Welcome back to the KOA Morning News. It is now 516 and it is a Wednesday morning hump day for us. And we've got a decent start out there. We've got a bit of a breeze now, but that wind is really going to pick up later today. And we've got some cloudy skies. Of course, that's our camera on the Cornell Complex in downtown Joplin. This is the MoDOT camera, <coughs> excuse me, a 20th in range line in Joplin. So let's talk about the wind. As we go through today, those winds are going to start picking up by about mid morning. They're going to be out of the south, gusting upwards of about 30 miles an hour or so out there, 25 to 30 miles an hour. Then as we had later to the evening, <coughs> goodness, that just wait, won't clear out. As we go into the evening and overnight, those winds are really going to start to ramp up and we're going to see those wind gusts 40, potentially 45 miles an hour out of the south. And that will be the case for most of our Thursday. So if you're traveling on any east west highways around the area, you absolutely need to be prepared for those gusty winds and they're going to continue a bit into our Friday. Now they'll ease up a bit for our Friday, but they'll still be gusting upwards of 25, potentially 30 miles an hour again. Uh, for our Friday as well. And as we look outside, 7th and range line, it's 42 in Joplin, feels like 38. We've got an east breeze at about 6 miles an hour. <coughs> I am going to get this cleared, I promise. Temperatures around the region, take a look at this. Bear, bear in mind, our average lows are about the mid-20s. We are in the mid, even upper 40s in some locations. The Odisha is the warm spot right now at 49 degrees in February at 518 in the morning. That's how far off of normal we are. So today we could see a few peaks of sun here and there, but otherwise we are going to be cloudy and warmer. Take a look at this mid 50s by late morning. Those winds really start picking up. We head into the afternoon. We're going to stay cloudy, breezy temperatures, low to mid 60s. Could even see some upper 60s out there, especially off to the south and west. Heading through the evening again because of the clouds, we're not going to cool back much. We're going to be into the low 50s for our overnight lows tonight and those winds of course continue in fact again as we mentioned as we go overnight and into early tomorrow morning those winds will begin to pick up across the area tomorrow our rain chances have come down a bit and in all honesty this kind of goes back to what we were discussing yesterday where i mentioned it looked like more of us were going to be dry and fewer of us were going to get showers unfortunately that seems to be a trend that's continuing we're seeing a decrease in the shower coverage around the area so these are starting to look a lot more isolated and so that's not to say some of you may not see a shower too tomorrow but i think most of us are going to be dry it's going to be breezy mostly cloudy believe it or not we may see a little more sunshine tomorrow than we do today mid maybe even upper 60s again close to the mid 60s friday friday first half of our day we're going to spend that with some mostly sunny skies and then similar to yesterday clouds are going to start to gradually increase as we head into the afternoon a little cooler saturday sunday in fact sunday some more shower chances a little closer to average and we'll start to warm back up a little bit as we head into next week so back above average into the low to mid 50s maybe even some upper 50s by the end of next week let's check your forecast we'll be back with more right after this are you or a family member in need of care in the home? 
Phoenix provides care in the comfort of your know you. Reach out today. Topping Health Watch this morning, medical professionals are sounding the alarm about prescription drug shortages. Experts testified before U.S. lawmakers Tuesday about the basic life-saving drugs they say often are in short supply. Those include older generic sterile injectables that are considered a staple in hospitals like painkillers, anti-infectives, and cancer treatments. The experts said there are now more than 250 active medication shortages. Although drug shortages are nothing new, 2023 saw some of the worst in nearly a decade affecting millions of people. That's according to data from a pharmacy professionals group, the American Society of Health System Pharmacists. In a survey of the group's members over the summer, nearly all said that they were short on drugs that they needed to treat their patients. And a new study is linking a synthetic chemical as a possible cause for an increase in premature births. Researchers say the chemical phthalates are known as everywhere chemicals because they are so common. They appear in items like food packaging, products such as soap and shampoo, furniture, even clothing. Scientists say the chemical can disrupt how the placenta functions, which could trigger premature births. The researchers say their study found up to 10% of preterm births were linked to the chemical in 2018. That could explain the rise in premature babies born in the country. And some adults as young as 50 could soon be eligible to receive the RSV vaccine, Arexi. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration is considering an extension on its approval of the drug. If the extension is approved, Arexi would be available for adults ages 50 to 55 who are at increased risk due to underlying medical conditions. Last year, the FDA approved Arexi and other RSV vaccine, Pfizer, Abrazio, for adults aged 60 and older. RSV is a highly contagious virus that causes flu-like illness in people of all ages. And it's a leading cause of death in the U.S. Sometimes heart disease isn't diagnosed until a person has a heart attack or signs of heart failure. And smoking is a major risk factor for the disease. Mandy Gaither talks to a former smoker on why she decided to quit and has more on how smokers can stop for good. When a person smokes, chemicals from the cigarette can cause the lining of blood vessels to swell and become inflamed. This can narrow those vessels and lead to heart problems. I was a very healthy person. I ran every day. I ate correctly. The only one thing I did wrong was smoke. After more than 20 years of smoking, Tammy says she was diagnosed with heart disease and underwent open heart surgery. I was on life support for two days and I had to fight. I had to fight my way back from death. So two days later, I woke up laying there with tubes in my throat, my hands tied down, and wondering what would happen, what went wrong. And it was at that point, I knew it was a cigarette. It's never too late to quit. The CDC has a network of what's called quit lines, telephone centers that pair smokers who call in with trained counselors who can help with those who want to quit. And once you get through those couple of uncomfortable days of nicotine withdrawal, you do begin to feel better and lower your risks of developing diseases caused by smoking, including cancer, cardiovascular disease, and COPD. You will have to pay for smoking, so please don't quit quitting. Reach out for help. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Anyone interested in getting help to stop smoking can call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. The CDC says the quit lines offer things like counseling, referrals to local programs that can help you quit, and even free cessation medication. That's a look at some of today's top health stories. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. And we've got ourselves a pretty decent day out there today. It's going to be cloudy and breezy, but temperatures much warmer. We'll have another look at that forecast uh, when the KOAM Morning News returns. Southeast Kansas Humane Society. See you before the big game Sunday, February 11th. Right now at 5.30, a Joplin family packs their bags for a trip to the Super Bowl. And we've got ourselves a fairly mild start for this time of year. Cloudy skies and breezy conditions on the way. We'll look at the forecast, get you out the door coming up.
Plus, Friedman Health announces its theme for this year's 5K walk in support of autism and awareness. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning, four states, and welcome to the KOAM Morning News. The time now is 529 a.m. I'm Caitlin O'Shaughnessy. I'm Chris Warner. Halfway through the work week and um, it's going by a little faster this week than it has. It seems the last couple of weeks. I think everyone's just excited for that Super Bowl. I think so too. And I, I, I've been saying it over and over. I think it's gonna be a great rematch between the 49ers and, and Chiefs. And I think it's that's going to make it an even better Super Bowl. Oh, yes. I still think we're going to win, of but I think it's are. still going to be a fa I think it's going to be a great game to watch and at least heading into the weekend. It's not going to be too bad around here. A little cooler around here. Of course, they'll be in Las Vegas where it's always nice and warm, right? It's always, it's always nice. nice in always Las nice Vegas. in Vegas. Well, let's take a quick look out uh, outside. This is uh, the camera on top of a traffic signal pole at 20th in range line and it is pointed back roughly to the north. As you can see, we're looking pretty good and the winds are relatively calm at this moment, but they're going to start to really pick up by mid morning out there. Temperatures around the region. Take a look. We are in the 40s. We've got upper 40s out there and as we've been mentioning, Neodice is the warm spot pushing near 50 degrees when we should be in the 20s. So that's how far above normal we are. Kids get on the bus, mostly cloudy skies, south breeze 5 to 10. We're talking low 40s and by the time they come home, we could still see a few peaks of sunshine here and there this afternoon, but I think over, all, overall we're just going to be cloudy. Low 60s by the time the bus brings them home. South breeze 10 to 20, gusting upwards of 25. Those south breezes will be gusting 25, potentially upwards of 30 miles an hour through today, and they'll increase overnight. And our highs today, we're looking right around the mid 60s, so well above normal as we should be in the mid 40s. We're going to hold on to the breezy conditions and the warm temperatures for at least a couple more days. We'll have a full look at that forecast here in just a few more minutes. Caitlin. Thanks, Chris. A Joplin church yesterday hosted a fundraiser to support local refugees and immigrants. First Presbyterian Church of Joplin hosted a luncheon for $8 a plate. All the proceeds from the event go to the organization RAISE. They help provide refugees and immigrants with resources and education to help them in their transition to a new home is um, a number of different integration type events and programs. And what that is focused on is creating community ties between our refugee clients and uh, members of the greater Joplin area. So we're raising funds to um, be able to sponsor events such as... The First Presbyterian Church hosts charity luncheons every month. And Freeman Health yesterday revealed the theme for the 2024 5K Walk and Run for Autism. For the fifth straight year, these combined events raise funds to support program development and scholarship assistance for the Bill and Virginia Leffen Center for Autism. The first place winner will be able to choose next year's theme. This year's theme, Walk, Run, and Roar, features dinosaurs. It isn't about the entering the 5K, okay. we have fundraising teams. So fundraising families teams. can sign up to have a team and right. then the one that raises the most money then gets the prizes and we have the three different prizes packages. The event will take place at 8 a.m. on Saturday, April 20th in front of Leffen Center in Joplin. A Springfield teen's wish will soon come true thanks to the Make-A-Wish program. Preston Hardyman, who recently underwent an unexpected heart transplant, was surprised after school today to see staff and volunteers setting up his one true wish, a Titan Fitness Home Gym. Now that his wish has been made, he has some dreams he'd like to see come true. Finish high school, go to college. Good, uh, I want to have good long lasting relationships in college, that's what I'm looking for. And, um, I don't know. Live life. I live a life I'm proud of. Make a Wish Missouri and Kansas teamed up to make Preston's wish come true. And several schools across the four states are celebrating the Chiefs heading to another Super Bowl with a Spirit Week. Yesterday, students in Carl Junction dressed up as Kansas City's hottest couple, Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. Uh, I think their costumes are amazing. Like. They all participated. I'm like, wow, because I've been a huge Chiefs fan to, like my whole life. My dad was, my mom is, like, um, it's just, wow, like how many people, just for the school also, and just how many people care, and it's just amazing. 
Later today, Carla Junction students will take part in Winning Wednesday. And a Joplin family is ready to board to the Super Bowl. Ryan Springer, his dad and son, are packing up and going to Vegas where they will watch in person the Chiefs play against the 49ers this weekend. The family paid $9,000 per ticket and said they are using years of savings to be able to attend the game. Then we talked about details and money and how we were going to get it all lined up and, and then we, we had the thing booked in about two and a half hours. Like at the age I am, um, it's hard to like put um, like different life experience compared to this, but I feel like in the future this is definitely coming um, up. Chiefs fans had to wait 50 years between their first two Super Bowl wins, but young Samuel Springer is lucky. He will see the team play their fourth Super Bowl in five years for the second time in person. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOAM Morning News. A large crowd gathers in Turkey to mourn the lives lost during a devastating earthquake that struck one year ago. Plus, the Biden administration says it's reviewing a Hamas response to the framework of a potential hostage deal. We'll have the latest. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. It's proud partner of Travis Kelsey and his foundation, 87 and running. Topping World Watch, China faces heavy snowfall in the midst of the Chinese New Year travel rush. Mark Stewart reports on how some travelers are dealing with the extreme winter weather ahead of Lunar New Year. Parts of China at a standstill during one of the most treasured times of year. Cars are stuck, some highways look like parking lots. There is such desperation, people are doing whatever they can to chip away the ice-covered pavement. It's all part of a winter blast hitting as hundreds of millions of travelers head home for the Lunar New Year holiday. Tong Zetao is in the middle of it. This journey has been too long, and it is indeed a torture. He told me his six-hour drive is now taking more than 24 hours. What are the road conditions like? Are you seeing snow? Are you seeing ice? How bad is it? The snow has been falling since the day before yesterday. It has melted a little, but it then turned into ice. So the road is very wet and slippery. He is one of many on a treacherous journey that has left some travelers stranded without food and water. Who needs warm water, this little girl asks as she goes car to car with her mother. Other villagers offer noodles and porridge from over the fence. It's not any easier if you're taking the train. It's packed inside the station in central China as passengers deal with delays. Much of this mess, a flashback to 2008 when blizzards left 24 people dead and hundreds of thousands of people stranded. Yet there's a spirit of determination to make it home. No matter what, we would always head home for the spring festival. It is a Chinese tradition. A tradition that could be hindered by unforgiving forces of nature. Mark Stewart, CNN, Beijing. And a large crowd gathers in Turkey to mourn the tens of thousands of lives lost during a devastating earthquake that struck one year ago. Tuesday marks one year since the deadly quake hit Turkey and neighboring Syria. People gather to mourn in Atakia for the country calls the disaster of the century. The government arranged the commemorations, but was greeted by angry crowds who claimed that the government did not do enough to save the victims in the rubble of the earthquake. A moment of silence was held to mark the exact time that the quake struck. A man and woman die after they attempt to attack a courthouse in Istanbul. The assailants injured six people in an attack on the Istanbul Justice Palace Tuesday morning. The court is heavily guarded and was once the largest courthouse in Europe. The suspects shot back at police before authorities gunned down both man and woman. And a firecracker factory fire killed six people in central India. Officials say Tuesday's fire also left at least 40 people injured and concerns rise as more people might be trapped. The fire lit other explosions in the facility, 
The cause is currently unknown. India is no stranger to fatal accidents involving firecrackers. Just last July, eight people were killed in an explosion at a different firecracker factory in southern India. Many in the country use firecrackers to celebrate religious holidays and weddings. And the Biden administration says it's reviewing a Hamas response to the framework of a potential hostage deal. It comes as Secretary of State Antony Blinken meets with negotiators in the Middle East. Senior correspondent Mike Tobin has more from Tel Aviv. As the fighting in Gaza rages on, there's new movement on the diplomatic front. On Tuesday, Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with Egyptian and Qatari leaders in an effort to secure a ceasefire agreement. Qatar's prime minister says negotiators have received a positive response from Hamas on a proposed hostage deal framework. What's happening on, on, uh, on the ground in Gaza, it affects the course of the negotiations all the time. The negotiation itself, it took some time in order to get them to a place where we get uh, that response. Hamas had been reviewing a proposal that includes extended pauses in fighting in exchange for Israeli hostages held in Gaza. The Iranian-backed group has previously called for the release of higher-profile Palestinian prisoners and a guarantee that Israeli forces will leave the Gaza Strip. There's still a lot of work to be done, but we continue to believe that an agreement is possible and indeed essential. Uh, and we will continue to work relentlessly to achieve it. As talks continue, Israeli troops are still battling militants in the southern city of Khan Yunus. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant says ground operations will eventually reach the town of Rafa on the Egyptian border. More than one million civilians are estimated to be sheltering there. <laughs> We will also reach the places where we have not yet fought, in the center of the Gaza Strip and in the south. On Wednesday, Secretary Blinken travels to Israel for talks with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. And that's a look at some of your biggest headlines from around the world. We'll be right back. Time to change your luck. Indigo Sky Casino is the place to be in February. Sour and Buffalo. Get a 40-piece chicken McNuggets for just eleven ninety nine. dollars 99 ba 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 Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News 545 now on this Wednesday morning and it is a pretty decent start to the day. It's cloudy out there. It's a bit breezy, but it's well above where we should be by 20 some odd degrees. Modoc camera 20th and range line looking pretty good this morning as well, but we are going to see those winds really start to ramp up by mid morning out of the south. Wind gusts will be upwards of 25 to 30 miles an hour as we go through today. And then we head into the overnight and into tomorrow. And we'll have those southerly winds gusting 45 miles an hour out there. So if you are traveling on any east-west highways today, tomorrow, and even into Friday, you're going to want to make sure that you are prepped to hold on to that wheel and watch out for these very gusty winds out there as they're going to persist with us for at least the next couple of days. We're at 42 in Joplin right now, and it is an east breeze at about 6 miles an hour. So again, it is calm by comparison to what we'll see later today. We are sitting at 49 in the Odisha is still as the warm spot 45 in Pittsburgh 43 Lamar Nevada 41's Carthage Monette uh, and the Osho and 40 in Miami as well as Anderson a couple of the cooler spots out there but worry not everybody will warm up pretty nicely again today again we could see a few peaks of sun here and there I think for the most part we're going to be cloudy but a few peaks of sunshine will be possible we're going to be breezy the winds again picking up by mid morning and we'll be in the mid 50s by 11 as we head into the afternoon our highs today back into the mid 60s out there again cloudy skies breezy and again, a few peaks of sunshine will be possible. We head into the evening. We'll hold on to cloudy skies initially, then go mostly cloudy overnight, and we'll still be well above average. We should be in the 20s for our uh, lows, 40s for our highs, and we're going to be in the low 50s for our lows. That's how far above average we're going to be across the area. Again, breezy tomorrow, windier. In fact, as we mentioned, those gusts could pick up 40, 45 miles an hour out of the south. We could still see an isolated shower, but you see our rain chances have gone down a bit. That's because, unfortunately, it looks like most of us are going to remain dry. That's not to say some of you may not see a few showers out there, but most of us dry tomorrow. And believe it or not, we'll see a little more sunshine tomorrow than we will today. We're back, still back around the mid-60s on Friday, so not bad out there. And then Friday will be like we saw yesterday, where 
We'll start off with some pretty decent uh, sunny skies and clouds gradually increasing through the day. A little cooler heading into the weekend. Additional rain chances on Sunday, but that cooler is about where we're supposed to be for this time of year. Sunshine returns on Monday. We'll go with a mix of clouds and sun next week. Temperatures return back to above normal levels into the low 50s for the most part. Could be back to the upper 50s by the end of next week. So all in all, not too bad out there. Uh, we just got to be prepared for the wind today and into our Thursday and possibly our Friday as well. And that's check your forecast. We're back with more of the KOAM morning news right after this. Project, my project. This year's Grammy Awards had plenty of special moments and memorable performances, and the ceremony also shined a light on a high school teacher in Annandale, Virginia, who inspires her students to love music. Rebecca Turco spoke with the teacher after she returned from Los Angeles. Here we go, A, D. Making music is about teamwork, about connecting. That's what Annie Ray loves about teaching. Being a teacher, I d never expected the fact that I was going to learn so much every day, more for my students than I ever teach them. Annie's the orchestra director at Annandale High School. She teaches around 130 kids of all abilities. A, D, A, stop. This is her special education class. She calls it crescendo. It is, um, meaningful, dedicated curriculum specific to their needs. Let's rocket bow it. Today's Annie's first day back after a whirlwind weekend. I can't even believe it happened. She won a Grammy and got to attend Sunday's ceremony. I went from one moment teaching on the podium to next like being on the plane, next hugging Taylor Swift, and then now I'm back here. <laughs> Annie received the Grammy Music Educator Award at a special ceremony before Sunday's show. She thanked her students. Thank you for being bold. Thank you for not being afraid to be seen trying. This award has my name on it, but it's truly the programs. This, our school is so unique and beautiful, um, and it truly belongs to them. Annie says 66 countries are represented in the student body. She says making music together is their universal language, a way to learn life skills, trial and error. And arts funding should be there, not just as a social emotional outlet, but some of the best teaching is happening in these classrooms. Thanks to her award, Annie's school is getting a $10,000 grant to buy more instruments and keep music education going. Long or short? A D long. That's right. Good, good, good. Ray says that she is very humbled to have received this award. And a DJ from Waynesboro, Virginia says many years of hard work are finally paying off. Andrew Hypes performed with Justin Timberlake during his concert in Memphis last month. I spoke about the experience with Mandy Bartholomew. My mom, um, for the longest time, has always said, like, you're going to work with Justin in some capacity. Uh, I don't know what, but you are. And, you know, fast forward to now and, and here we are. There he was, DJ Andrew Hypes in the booth during Justin Timberlake's hometown show in Memphis. The fans were, were so amazing and uh the energy was just incredible. But the journey to DJing for Justin Timberlake didn't happen overnight. Born in Waynesboro to a musician father, music was always in Hype's blood. One day I picked up the drumsticks and I just fell in love with playing music. Hypes has moved and worked all across the country, but when it comes to his big break, as the saying goes, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Without even me being in the room, um, essentially the president of his label was like hey do you know any upcoming dj producers like the combination of the two and um our mutual friend that i know like apparently like instantly stood up was like yeah you gotta check this kid out hype says there are already plans in the works to dj for justin timberlake again would love to to shout out waynesboro I mean, it is a small town there isn't a lot of opportunity but you know i'm hoping that you know, people people see that you can really do anything out here as long as you, you believe in yourself. Timberlake kicks off his Forget Tomorrow World Tour in Vancouver on April 29th. We'll be right back. Refined or rustic, they have it all at the home store in downtown Parsons. Trust us to keep moving with you. Text TB to 52886 and tell Congress local broadcasting is here to stay. 
A special birthday at the Oregon Zoo this week, a black rhinoceros, the tiniest at the zoo, turning two months old. The boy calf was born in December, weighing around 100 pounds. Since then, he's bulked up to 225. He spends his days taking short walks and playing with his mother, Josie, and her companion, King. Staff at the zoo still haven't decided on a name yet. The black rhinoceros is considered critically endangered, with the western subspecies of the black rhino being declared extinct in 2011. And if you have a whopper of an idea, you could win a million dollars. Burger King is asking fans to come up with new ideas for its signature sandwich, with the best pitch earning one million dollars. Contestants can customize their Whoppers with up to eight toppings, then submit their creations on the fast food chain's website. Three finalists will be picked to refine their creations, and customers across the country will vote for the winning sandwich. Contestants have to be Royal Perks members and have until March 17th to apply. Certainly an interesting idea. I've got a child at home that probably has some very unique ideas for a potential future Whopper. Taking a look at our forecast for today. Again, we've got calm winds now. At least a light breeze, but those winds out of south are going to start gusting 25, 30 miles an hour. We're expected to be cloudy, maybe a few peaks of sun, and we'll be in the mid-50s by late morning. As we head into the rest of the afternoon, cloudy skies. Again, maybe a little bit of sunshine here and there. Breezy and temperatures staying well above average right around the mid-60s. Heading into this evening, cloudy skies, and then we'll start to go mostly cloudy overnight and still, again, well above average. And so our average highs are in the low 40s. We're 10 degrees above our average lows for t our average highs for our lows tonight as we fall back into the low 50s. Mid, maybe even upper 60s tomorrow. Unfortunately, our rain chance is somewhat scaled back, and so we're looking more at just an isolated shower event. Maybe a little more sunshine out there. Mid 60s on Friday, not too bad. A little cooler, but closer to normal heading into at least Sunday. A few more shower chances out there, and then a little warmer again next week. Let's check your forecast. We're back with more of the KOAM Morning News right after this. Don't drink and drive at Bath Naylor Funeral Home.